When you're using the Cisco modeling labs, you can build virtual labs using Cisco equipment. Um, you can have Cisco routers, switches, and firewalls. Um, they do have an option here that lets you have better console control than what comes in the program itself. Let me log in to my lab here. I have a lab here called IPsec Failover. And normally you click on the lab that you want. And if you want to access the console, you click the button here and you open a console. But then what you have to do is slide that window up and then you've got a console there. So you can do all your configuration and all your stuff like that. But if you want to have multiple windows open, you have to scroll that back down, select the other device, open a console for that device slide that back up, and then you're on the console. Now they include a tool that they call Breakout, which will let you connect to your local machine and it will forward the connection for a console over to your lab. So if you click on Tools on the menu here, it says Breakout Tools. Um, it gives you some documentation about it, about the available versions. Um, there's a Linux version, there's a Mac OS version, and there's a Windows version. I'm going to show you the Linux version and the Windows version. So we go to the option to download. I have to go back one. Go download here. And when you download the Linux version, it just lo it just downloads a binary file. And this is the file that it downloaded. Now I have already got it downloaded on this machine, so let's do this. So if you just run breakout by itself, It'll give you a list of options that you have here. And the option that we're looking for is the UI because that tells it to run the user interface. So we'll do that breakout command again, but we'll add UI to the end of it. And even though it's uh, giving you some information here, it's running and it's waiting for a connection. So you have to leave this window open. And it tells you down here that it's it'll serve connections on this address. So localhost on port 8080 is what's running there. So we're going to just minimize that. Uh, go back to our browser. Gonna go to localhost. Well, we'll do it the way they had it in there. They had one two seven. And that shows you a breakout tool. Now when you first run this, the screen will be blank. And I'm gonna turn it off right there. And when you first run it, you want to go into the configuration. In the configuration, you have to tell it where your controller is. Uh, my controller is on this IP. And I've got it set for HTTPS. Um, you want to disable the option to verify the TLS certificate because it's a self-signed certificate. And it, it can't verify it. So just uncheck the option to verify the uh, ticket, the uh, certificate. You have to put your username that you use for Cisco Labs. That's that same username I used to log into this screen. 
in the password. Uh, accept the defaults here for the start port of 9000. And when you first run this, instead of being 127001, it normally defaults to the loopback in IP version 6. So just change this to 0 .0 0.0.1. Uh, leave the UI port at 8080 and leave the lab file name the default and hit save. And it'll say configure, configuration save. Then you go back to the labs tab and you hit this refresh. Yours will be blank right here because you haven't set it up yet. When you hit refresh, it'll bring up a list of labs that are currently running. And all you have to do is click the on button there. And this message is related to if I was going to do some port 5900, which is VNC. I don't use VNC in my lab, and I'm already running something on port 5900 on this machine. So that's why you're seeing this error message. So once you got it set to on there, you'll click on the lab name here and it shows you all the devices that are in your lab these are the device names here and they match the device names that i have in this lab and what it tells you here is that the serial port zero on each one of these is turned on for the console. The enable lets you know it's on. So for example, let's see here. This is my, this is one of the routers. It's called, what's it called? iOS v3 and this is iOS v0. So when I look at ISV0, I see that it's running on port 9000. You see it's grayed out. Um, the other one was 3. It's running on port 9007. So what you can do is you can open a command prompt on your local machine. And this is just um, output that's coming from that breakout tool that you're running. You want to open another window. I'll actually open a whole nother set here. So when I open a new window here, when I tell net to localhost on port 9000, it's connecting to the breakout tool, which is then making a connection to the lab. So now I'm in that lab. Now the advantage here is I can open another window or another tab. And I can connect to that other, the other router, which is on port 9007. So I got one router here, I got another router here. So you can do um, you can do all your cut and paste if you got a pre-built configuration. Um, you can copy it from here and you can paste it into those windows. So let's get out of that console. And let's get out of the other one. To exit Telnet, you do a control right bracket, and then you do a Q for quit, and that gets you out of the console. Now, if you're running some type of uh, terminal multiplexer like Screen or Tmux, um, you can also use it there. So I'm running Tmux here. So if I were connected to the first uh, router so on localhost on port 9000 
going to make this window bigger. Now, TMUX and screen will let you actually split the screens. Let me see if I can remember the keystroke. I believe it's that and that. Okay, there we go. We've got multiple windows here. So on this other side here, I can open up the other console. Uh, what was it? Let me do now it just so happens that um, I'm testing a failover configuration. So if I wanted to make sure the configs were the same on both, I could do a show run and verify that the configurations are the same. And you can, using TMUX and using screen, you can cut and paste between both windows. All right, that's the Linux version. And we're going to go back and look at the Windows version. I'm actually running that in a virtual machine. Let me make sure it's open. And it is not. So we will start this virtual machine and I will come back. All right, the VM is still booting, but I'm going to go ahead and start my connection. I don't use Skype, so why are you upgrading? We're going to connect back to the Cisco virtual lab server. And that is a, it's actually a virtual machine that's running on a um, ESXi host that I have in my lab. So we need to go back to 20. Now let me see what it was. I believe it's 40.200. Yeah, it's 40.200. So here we go. There it is. We'll log into that model labs. Um, you still see the same labs there. This is the one we're working with. Uh, we go to tools, uh, breakout tool, and we want to scroll down to download, and we want the one for Windows. And I've already downloaded, so it's going to download another copy of it and call it dot one. And it's just in my download folder. So I will close that. And you'll have to open up a command prompt. You'll have to open a command prompt. And I believe it's in my downloads folder. And it's just like the Linux version. You have to give it the, the UI option from the command line. All right. 
card. It tells you it's running on the same thing, 001-8080. Now, if you've got something already on port 8080, you would have to change the port. Uh, just look at the options down here. Uh, right here, you, the dash port, you can change the port that it's listening on. So it's running now. We want to leave that window open and minimize it. Uh, in the web browser, go to localhost 8080. And you see there's no data here because it's the first time I've run it on this machine. So I'll hit configuration. Got my admin and my password. It's going to 001. Just make sure, remember this address defaults um, on some Linux systems to the IP uh, version 6 address. So just change it to the local host. Um, everything looks okay, so I'll just hit save there. Go back to the labs tab. And you have to hit refresh to tell it to go to the controller and see what's running. There's the lab that I have. Turn it on. And you see the same thing there. Again, you see that um, this router is running on this port. And the same for all these others down here. Now this Alpine is a, a Linux box, so it's also running on 5900, which is a VNC connection to it. So while you're in Windows, you open up another command prompt. Or you can open up your PuTTY tool if you have it. Let's see if I have PuTTY on this box. Uh, da, 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 PuTTY, yeah, there's PuTTY. And you have to click it on Telnet. And you're going to localhost. And you're going to port 9000. And nothing happens, so you hit enter. And there you are on the console. And you can have multiple putty sessions open with multiple consoles. And this window that you opened where you ran the breakout, it'll generate some logs for you. But you have to leave this window open as long as you're using uh, the consoles. And this console here is much easier than using uh, the console that comes built in because you can only do one at a time. You know, can only do one and you have to squeeze in and out and everything. And that's just a quick example of the breakout tool that comes with Cisco Modeling Labs. Um, again, the lab is um, a piece of software that runs on a hypervisor like ESXi. And it will let you create labs that contain Cisco equipment like routers and switches. Um, just Google Cisco modeling labs for more info. But uh, that's how you get easier access to the consoles. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.